Now these things are a little over an inch thick. I'm going on a real high heat today on our little Weber with some cowboy charcoal. I've got this thing screaming hot right now with some grill grates on top. I'm gonna take uh, some oil here and I'm just gonna brush our grill grates. And these grill grates are gonna just make some incredible uh, grill marks for us. It's gonna look really nice like it just came out of a, a high-end steakhouse. So you can impress your friends in the backyard with these. So I'm just gonna put these pork chops on. I like to, oh, did you hear that sizzle? I like to put them on, press them in a little bit. These are gonna go for about, these are thick. I'm probably gonna go about four minutes per side. So I'm gonna do a, I'm sorry, four minutes, then turn and about four minutes again. So about eight minutes to a side. Get that sizzle and push that in. Now to go with this today, I'm gonna uh, put a little of our Havana heat, which is mango habanero uh, at the end, which is really gonna accentuate that Caribbean flair with the, mo the mojo on it, give it a little sweetness with mango, and come in the back with some habanero. And to go with that is gonna be a mango salsa that Billy's gonna help me out with. And for right now, I'm gonna take some of that mango that we cut up earlier, and I'm just gonna lace it in here. Just gonna move some of these around a little bit. Give me some room. Put these on here to get some grill marks on it to add that little extra flair. You don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, for your salsa, but I have the space and I like to do just that little extra every time to make it different than other cooks on the grill. All right, so with that, I'm going to grill those off for just a minute and I'm going to turn it over to Billy to tell us about making the slaw. Yeah, so since we're doing a mango salsa on top of these pork chops and we've got the mojo seasoning, really getting that Caribbean flair, we decided to do a Caribbean coleslaw which is uh, Caribbean in the fact that it's, it's got uh, mango, pineapple, you can put papaya in it, you can do whatever kind of tropical fruits you want to do. Uh, the recipe is going to be online when we get done. So I'm going to go over here and start chopping. You do want about three cups of, of purple cabbage and three cups of green cabbage. Uh, I've already cut up the green cabbage, so I'm just going to do a quick chop on the purple cabbage here. And three cups is going to be a about half of a large head of cabbage or one whole small head of cabbage. You don't have to be extremely neat with this if you don't want. If you, if you like things to be all precise and do the mise en place, you certainly can. If you don't like cabbage, you could certainly do this with um, daikon radish or jicama. Uh, both of those would be really good. Just something that's got some good crunch. You don't want this to get uh, wilted down. You want to keep a nice big crunch on it when you bite into it. So get that put over here. You know, Billy, when we, uh, when we were talking about some of the flavor combinations that we were going to use uh, in our sauce for the, the Havana heat, and then of course this recipe, yep. you know, we, we, we call it, you know, Havana heat, more of a, a Cuban, you know, bend to it which is really more Caribbean in its flavoring, right? So, you know, one of the nice things that happened, you know, uh, back when, you know, Christopher Columbus came in, landed in the West Indies and the Caribbean there, you know, they started the, the spice trade uh, and the spice routes then and kind of brought some exotic flavors to the area that they didn't have. So they brought the cumin, they brought the, the mango, those kind of things were not native in that area and they brought it and they brought, believe it or not, the Spanish in about 1823 started bringing in Duroc pork, it came from Spain and Portugal. Uh, and it's a, it's a red, uh, you know, uh, pig with floppy ears. It's got some great intermuscular fat, you know, and the compart Duroc pork uh, is even more so, right? So there's Duroc pork and then there's compart Duroc pork. And we're gonna see here in a, in a minute uh, at the end, how moist this is going to be when we cut into it, and it's because of that extra uh, care that the Compart family farms uh, put in their Duroc line. All right, so while Bruce was talking about that, I went ahead and put in the green cabbage, which is three cups of green cabbage, a couple of uh, carrots, which when we get this mixed up, you'll see adds a nice color to it. 
Um, I've also put in some um, some flat leaf parsley, probably about a quarter of a cup. You want to take a whole pineapple. Now, you can take a whole pineapple like we have here and cut it up yourself, or if you want to take, save some time, most of the grocery stores these days will have it cored, and all you have to do is take it out and cut it up. So I've got a whole pineapple here that we've, we've cut up. I've also got two large mangoes that we've diced up. Put that in there as well. We'll get a good shot of this when we get everything mixed up. You also want to put uh, three green onions. You want to chop that up. That's going to give it a nice bite. Um, not only the color of the green onion, but the green onion itself is not overpowering like some of the white and uh, red onions. So you want to have a quarter of a cup of almonds. It'll give us a little more crunch and a little bit of salt as well. Right behind you, Bill. Now that's, that's basically what's in the slaw. Again, you could add papaya if you want papaya instead of mango. You could add guava. You could put whatever fruits you want to put in here. The other part to the uh, slaw is our dressing. Now I've already made the dressing because it really needs to sit for a little while and get cold. Uh, in the recipe you'll see that there's honey, brown sugar, uh, some red wine, not red wine vinegar, but just red wine. You can buy red wine and cooking wine if you want to do that, if you don't have wine at the house. Uh, some garlic. And then we've also put in some lemon juice, some olive oil, and instead of regular mustard or a hot sauce, we decided to use our true gold mustard sauce to replace the regular mustard. That balsamic in there is really going to give it a nice bite. And we're going to use our Havana heat as well. So we still get that mango flavor in addition to the habanero. So what I'm going to do with that is pour that stuff all the way in there. And I'm going to use my hands here to mix everything up. And we're mixing this up now. It's not going to get uh, wilted. Uh, we haven't put any salt in here, so we don't have to worry about the cabbage leaking out a lot of excess moisture. But we do want this to sit for probably 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, it can sit out if it's not too hot, uh, or you can put it in the fridge if you, if you want to do that, just to make sure it stays a little bit chilled. Uh, this was really good the next day. But as long as you let it sit for a little while, you'll be good. Now, before we serve this, what I'm going to do is cut up some more mango to put on top of it, but here, we get the shot from the side camera, here's what the Caribbean coleslaw looks like. Some really beautiful colors, really beautiful flavors with the mango and the pineapple. So, you know, another interesting thing, Billy, you know, that we, we call our sauce Havana Heat, but you would probably never find that flavor combination in Cuba today. The, the food there is pretty we'll just say bland, right? It doesn't have a lot of spice to it. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, in the, prior to the 1950s, it had a lot of influence from East Africa, Spain, Portugal, Asia, to really influence the food there. And I'm just gonna turn these pork chops over. Oh yeah. Yeah, a traditional Cuban uh, spice mixture is gonna be cumin, garlic, oregano, uh, and onion. So there's not a lot of heat to it. Uh, my wife is a Cuban uh, by birth, so we like to give a good nod out to her heritage with the mango, which is really big in Cuba. But we wanted to add a little more flavor, so we took the habanero to give that mango habanero, and that puts us more into the general Caribbean area. You get into the Jamaicas, and like Bruce said, into Miami, where you've got a lot of other people mixing in with that Cuban influence. And you find this mix of habanero and mango uh, really consistent in a lot of places. Yeah, more in that South Florida area, uh, yeah. where they've really led all those influences and the availability of all the spices. Because in 1950, you know, there was a, the revolution and uh, unfortunately, a lot of the, 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 the food trade and, and the restaurants just didn't get a chance to flourish there. So the, the Cuban population in Miami and Tampa, et cetera, is what really flourished. Now I'm, I'm kind of glazing on here our Havana heat which has got some mango notes and it's in its mango puree. So I, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but you can kind of see some of the chunks in here. That's the sweet onions, the mango puree, the habanero puree, right? This is not, not flavoring that we use. They're the actual, you know, onions, habaneros, mangoes uh, in this. I'm just going to paint that on there. I'm going to hit the other side uh, when it comes off or 
I don't want it to burn. It does have some sugar in it, so I don't want it to burn over the fire, but sitting on top of it and, and getting in there is just fine. Now, what I'm looking for on this pork is about 140 degrees for me. Uh, that's more my personal preference. Some people tell you you can take pork at 135, let it rest, and it'll go up. I like to take mine off around 140 and let it go up to 145. That's just my personal preference. You no longer need to take pork up to the 165 range like you used to back, you know, before the advanced in the in the refrigeration and, and stuff like that. So we're gonna look for just kind of like a steak, maybe just a little bit, maybe five to 10 degrees more than you would like a steak is how I would like my pork. So I'm just gonna give it a test here to hey, see Bruce, where we you, are. What are you cooking on over there? I am cooking on the little Weber Smokey Joe Jr. over some cowboy charcoal. And- uh, Smells can, awfully good. I can tell you, Normally I'd like to do about a medium high heat. This thing's screaming right now, probably in the 650, 700 range. Um, so we're getting some, some good heat with this charcoal. We're sitting in the hundreds, uh, so we got a little bit to go on the pork here. So what you got going on over there, Billy? So I'm getting your mango salsa ready if you want to tell them what, uh, what I'm putting together. Yeah, right so there. the mango salsa is really just uh, intended to complement uh, the flavor. Uh, as well as just make a nice visual presentation. So we've got the, the brightness of the mango offset with the, the purple or red of the red onion, the diced tomato, make sure you get a nice fresh uh, tomato. We're gonna do a little green with the cilantro and then we're gonna kind of bind it all together with two limes, right? Get that lime juice in there, let it mix. Normally if I'm at home, I would do this an hour or so beforehand, put it in the fridge so it, it has time for all those flavors to really meld. Um, and, you know, but like I said, I took advantage of what we were doing today, grilled off the mango, grilled off the, the limes, just to add just that, that next layer of, of uh, smokiness to it, uh, hopefully a little depth of flavor. And, you know, one of the things that, that I've always struggled with is, is skinning uh, and, and cutting up a mango. The seed is in there in a, in a very odd way, and I think Billy hopefully uh, is yep. going to show us a trick. He told me about it. I haven't done it yet, but it sounds interesting. Yeah, as soon as I finish cutting up your onion here, I'll, I'll get started. This coleslaw looks really good. That's pretty. Well, we have a lot of it, so everybody here filming today gets a lot of good food. Yeah, one of the things that we, uh, we like, you know, when we're, we're doing things is, you know, you eat with your eyes, right? So we want vibrant colors that are going to pop, especially in the, in the spring and summertime. When you think about the Caribbean, you really want that, that vibrant color. You know, this, we're doing it with Compart Duroc pork today, which, which is an incredible product to use. But I also do this same thing with uh, heavy fishes like swordfish, grouper, snapper. You know, any, any white dense fish uh, can stand up to the grilling and the flavor. I really enjoy that flavor. So while we're doing this with pork today, you could absolutely do this with fish, shrimp, uh, it would also be a great, great flavor combination with this that holds up with the, the mango habanero. Can we get a shot of the salsa over here or the, that we put together if we can? So you can see we got some very similar colors to our coleslaw. We got the orange of the mango, we've got the red onion. So everything sort of is going to marry together when we put it on the plate. I'm going to grab a paper towel, Bruce, then I'll come back and I'll show the mangoes. All right, right, will do. So I've got some varying uh, heat zones here. So I got some pork that's about ready. I'm gonna give it just another minute or so. It's right on the edge there. So we're just gonna give it another, another minute or two. You can, uh, you know, I'm cooking open today since these are so thick, you could use the dome, get that convection uh, heat going. It would cook the top a little faster if you didn't have as much time. Uh, that would be helpful as well. When you have the bone in there, um, you know, you can get the boneless chops, but I, anytime I get the opportunity, I get the bone in. Any, any meat I can get bone in, I do. For some, I just, I just feel like it adds something special uh, to the flavoring. And then there's a rule at my house that says if, if the meat has a bone, you're allowed to eat it with your hands. 
Uh, so my son and I really enjoy eating our pork chops and gnawing on the bone. We do the same with steaks uh, as well. You gonna teach us a little bit about the mangoes there, Billy? Yeah, you know, you can find some great things on the internet, and this is one of the things that I found that works really well. When we were putting together the Havana heat, we went through a ton of mangoes. So figuring out how to get these things, you know, peeled and get the flesh out uh, took, some, took some doing. If you'll notice with the mango, it's, it looks round, but it's actually a little bit oval. So you've got two sides that are a little more shallow, and that's where that seed is in the middle. So what you do is you want to come about an eighth of an inch out from that middle tab where it connected to the tree, and you just want to go straight down. If you happen to go a little too close and you get the seed, like I just did, you just sort of go around it. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do a mango. A lot of people will hatch cut it and then fold it out. What I've found is the easiest way is I make a few cuts on the side to give me a nice big slice. And then I've got an acrylic wine glass here. You can use glass if you want. I prefer acrylic because I'm a bit of a bull in the china shop and I don't want to break the glass. But you want to take it with the flesh down and the skin out and you basically want to start on the very edge. And then you just push down. Push all the way down. And you end up with a perfectly peeled piece of mango. You don't have any of the outer stuff left on there so you don't get that bitterness and it's really thin. You could take, uh, you know, if you're really good with a knife, you could take a nice fillet knife and, uh, and fight with these. But this is just such an easy way to peel your mangoes. And the other thing my wife loves to do, because she loves mangoes, is once I cut off a little bit of the outside, instead of throwing this pit away, which is nothing but a big seed, you can actually take this and chew on it, suck on it, get all that flesh and all that juice out of it. So there's a lot of stuff left here. For right now, since we have so much of this stuff cut up, I'm just gonna put this one in the trash. All right, so while you were doing that, uh, Billy, I went ahead, some of these pork chops were ready. Went ahead and took them off um, and glazed them up. I've got two kind of set for presentation here. Uh, and I got one that we're gonna slice up and look at and taste here in a second. And the uh, one was a little bit thicker, it was closer to a two inch than a one and a quarter, one and a half. Uh, so it's taken just a touch longer. That happens. That's what live grilling is all about. Tell you, I, I, I love these Gunter Wilhelm knives. I don't care what you're cutting, the right mango or a green mango, it just, it cuts through it. You don't have to worry about it pressing down and mashing it. It's got a sharp edge. Be real careful because you can, take the edge of a finger off if you're not paying attention. I know you use them on the when you're trimming up your pork all the time. Oh yeah, I love the uh, I love the the knives when I'm prepping the meat. Uh, today I did all my prep ahead of time, so that was nice. Uh, you know, one of the nice things, especially um, we're going to be doing a rib cook later this week, personally for the families uh, at the house, and you know you want to get a knife. You know, when you're when you're trimming your meats, uh, the big porks and et cetera, you want to get something that has a nice, you know, flex to it that can follow the meat uh, in there. And, you know, the longer the fillet knife, these are the short fillet knife is really nice boning knife. You see how it's got that bend to it. That's really important, uh, you know, when when trimming up your meat. All right. How you doing, Billy? I'm I'm ready whenever you're ready. About ready. I got one that's got a few more minutes on it, okay. but. I think we're ready to start dressing up. Why don't you let me see the, uh, yeah. Well, oh, you know what? I gotta do the pineapple. Ah, oh yeah, That's special special do. treat today. Something you can uh, kind of do at home, party entertaining that might kind of set your stuff apart at a tailgate or whatever. So we're gonna serve up this Caribbean slaw inside a pineapple. Well, since I was talking about the boning knife, I'll use the boning knife. So I'm just going to cut this one up so we can see what the inside looks like. And present some slices as well on our, on our presentation. You know, these uh, bone-in pork chops, they're kind of like a T-bone, right? Uh, that have both sides, almost like a, a filet and a strip. 
uh, in it. All right. I'm going to get some cuts rivers? here. Yeah, I'm about ready if you're about ready. You know, it's not the prettiest cord pineapple out there, but I think it'll do. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of lay some pieces here. That Lisa can try here in a minute. Put that to the side. Make sure I get a lot of that fruit. Yeah, I'm going to just kind of, for decoration, put a little lime around it. Very nice. That does pretty good visual when you're doing a party to have something, you know, take the pineapple, cut it in half. If you were doing a, a summer barbecue, you could do the same thing with a watermelon and put a nice fruit salad in it. Just sort of adds to the look. Like Bruce said, you, you eat with your eyes first before you ever have a chance to taste it. Your eyes and your nose when you're smelling it cooking. So, so we've got that last one coming off, but I think we got some good looking stuff here, Bruce. I know I'm ready to eat. Yeah, we sure do. So. I think, uh, I think we'll have Lisa come in and try some food. She looks eager. Yeah, I, have, um, I have a glove. That's right. I got nice fork. pink gloves in your fork. I yeah, I think that. I this think is that, absolutely beautiful. That one right there has your I name on it. I don't want to touch it. It's so Well, cool. here, let me cut you. Let me see if this one looks good. And I'll Maybe cut you one over here. I've got something to put some slaw in, too. So. Okay. Like I said, bull in China shop, I hit stuff all the time. Here we go, Lisa. The smell is amazing. If we could only pipe the smell go. and the taste <laughs> through, then we'd really have something, wouldn't we? Okay. So again, it's that Compart Duroc pork that's been brined with some moho seasoning, grilled off on the Weber with the cowboy charcoal, brushed with our Havana heat, finished with the mango salsa and the Caribbean slaw that also has ties in with the Havana heat as well and our true gold mustard. Mm. I think it's good. Mm. <laughs> she might like it. It sounds like it's good. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. And that, that pumper pork, oh, the tenderness of, of the moisture. Just amazing. That is absolutely delicious. And a little yeah. bit of heat. A little bit of heat, but not too bad. Not, and I don't know. Let me, I'm going to come over here on this. There's nothing dry about that. This camera, you know, this is a Compart Duroc, you can kind of see the moisture uh, in this thing just coming out. It's a nice, it's a little over medium rare. You know, it's more medium, which is just fine. Of course, that's my personal preference. You can go a little rare if you like, but that is just one beautiful piece of pork. Mm, it's delicious. Mm. I'm try some myself. Burst of flavors in that coleslaw, absolutely mm. delicious. We got a wonderful recipe here for you that you can try at one of your weekend cookouts. It is absolutely fabulous. You will be totally happy with this. And we just want to say thanks so much for watching Bandicoot Live, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>